all, uh, I'm a tech lead at uh, Linaro, and I'm going to be talking about AOSP and dev boards. So this is something we've been talking about for some time, just some updates here. Uh, we'll talk about dev boards. What are AOSP? Uh, what do we do with AOSP on dev boards? Why are dev boards in AOSP? And then some community building stuff. Uh, so why do we even need dev boards working with ASP? I think the simple answer is that they provide a vehicle or a mechanism that allows us to have uh, upstream, uh, have an overlap between the upstream kernel development and the latest ASP. So uh, John and Amit have done a lot of, a uh, uh, couple of talks about it. Uh, there's an excellent talk uh, that was given in 21. So probably I'd, I'd recommend that you go and uh, have a look at that. But with these, uh, the, this combination of upstream uh, kernel and uh, latest ASP, we are able to find and fix regressions uh, with upstream, implement and verify new ASP features and technologies. For example, GKI development, the DMA buff heaps development, some generic files, et cetera. They were uh, validated using the dev boards. Um, what kind of dev boards do we currently support? So historically, we started with Hikey, which was the first 96 boards uh, dev board. Uh, we went on to DBA410C, 820C, and, and the path. But right now, we are at uh, the DB845C and the RB5, which are the current working devices. We are also working on enabling uh, an Exynos 850-based uh, dev board called E8596. So let's talk about ASP on dev boards. Basically, what we do to uh, ensure that the latest ASP works on uh, our supported dev boards. Um, as uh, ASP develops new features, we, as the dev board maintainers, uh, try to enable these features on these dev boards. So this helps with uh, validating these features, but also reporting any regressions and issues that are found. So some of the examples in the past year that we have uh, enabled with our dev boards are uh, system DLKM support, where uh, we have been able to, we created the uh, system DLKM partition and also use the pre-built system DLKM image to uh, validate this feature. Uh, EROFS enablement and validation. Uh, we also did module parallel loading enablement, which is uh, right now it's a work in progress because we found a bug where the kernel crashes and that's something we are debugging at the moment. Um, there are a few uh, features that we enabled at Linaro. Uh, so the software rendering target, we got inspired from Cuttlefish, where it helps to um, bring up ASP on new devices where uh, GPU support is not yet there. And uh, right now, it works on Qualcomm uh, SOC-based dev boards. Uh, it needs some work to support other uh, SOCs as well. Uh, thermal HAL is something that is work in progress. Uh, it's a generic HAL that is developed by uh, Daniel. I don't think he's in the room. Oh, <laughs> Daniel is right here. So Daniel, and uh, this is based on uh, the upstream new thermal netlink using uh, lip thermal. Uh, provides an abstraction to the uh, platform thermal configuration, and uh, he's validated and it on uh, RB3 with tuning. RB5 also shows no uh, no regressions here. We also uh, ensure that uh, ASP keeps working on these dev boards. So we do a lot of uh, testing around these uh, with the ASP user space and Android common kernels across these devices. Um, right now, we test about, I think, 10 or 11 kernel versions and four, five user spaces and their combinations. As just as a sort of a metric, we have since this January, we have run about 820 million tests and 2.8 billion since we started. We've caught and triaged or fixed uh, 36 issues that are related to ASP. Uh, yeah, let's talk about how we keep these dev boards working with upstream projects and uh, ASP. So uh, keeping up with upstream uh, Linux, uh, mostly we test with, uh, we do regular testing uh, on board, on, on our desk as well as uh, in our CI with the upstream Linux. And uh, this helps us catch uh, merge window regressions that happen due to changes upstream like kconfig or sysfs changes. 
uh, etc so we've caught or reported about 18 issues since january this year but also with other upstream projects that are relevant with aosp so mesa drm hardware composer and mini gbm we found and reported or fixed a few issues and then when those things get fixed upstream we uh, sync aosp versions to upstream a few times a year also uh, important to to keep in sync with the Linux firmware upstream changes. So those are also things that we do. Um, the uh, topic of community um, developing with folks that are interested in ASP, working with these dev boards, it's not new. We've discussed it a few times. But we did want to share some thoughts around it. So we would like to propose a collaborative co uh, collaborative community space for uh, people that are interested in running ASP on their dev boards. The overall idea is uh, sort of simple. It's to provide one space where people can come and talk about and do discussions around uh, how to bring up, uh, how to have common healths, what kind of best practices that, uh, can we have around dev boards that work with ASP, and any common scripting and, uh, scripting and tools. So we have, uh, for example, there was a requirement last year where binaries could not be hosted on ASP. And uh, the, uh, we had to create vendor packages. So scripts to create those vendor packages from the binaries, et cetera, that could be used like pixel -like, uh, in a pixel-like manner. Those kind of things are, some of those things are already available. This will help us consolidate everything about uh, dev boards that work with ASP, so essential info like documentation, code, but also binaries. We would like to inculcate ASP style collaboration for new dev boards and communities so that uh, they, are able, they are familiar with the idea of how to uh, push patches towards ASP using uh, when, if they need to move over. This may help in, in case, uh, right now ASP is not accepting any new dev boards, but if that changes in future, uh, this can be a confidence boosting space where they know uh, about how devices have functioned with various versions of ASP and kernel changes, et cetera. In future, we would like to provide a sort of a dash dashboard that allows for building, boot, and testing uh, with mainline ASP. So right now, there is this is uh, the link that we have very recently created, uh, dev boards for android.linaro.org. I know it's a mouthful, but we couldn't find a short name. Uh, so we have a, a discussion forum via hash asp dash developers on FTC. Um, right now, this website provides uh, an ASP style collaboration space. So there is source navigation, uh, which is source dot, the rest of it, um, get it based review system. And we have moved the Hikey 960 based as a, as a demo device to uh, this system. It also uh, provides space for binary releases like vendor packages. Um, I have a question on that, if, if I may. Yeah, of course. Um, so do you have any sort of requirements or commitment of maintainership for that? Because I So that's, that's part of my discussion good. questions, yes. Oh, okay, all right, because I think that's one of the issues that had been mentioned in one previous BOF at the yeah. microconference for which Google was like, okay, well, somebody wants to add a board, but how do we know? Yeah. And in their mind, Lenaro is a trusted source of continued maintainership, but other parties may not be, so... Yes, so uh, I think there are there are a few things that I would like to open up for questions. So I have first question is does this idea make sense? So should we do like a community uh, space for dev boards that want to work with ASP? And if that is uh, if that is a, a we feel it is useful and relevant. Okay, I see Kevin says yes. So thanks, Kevin. Um, we do want to make sure. Uh, same point as you, Kareem, that adding devices should be okay, but there should be somebody who takes ownership of them. So because it's going to be a community initiative as Linaro, I don't think we want to take that ownership, but we want to have device maintainers. So we want to inculcate a community where if you have a dev board and you are interested in running USP, we all can come together. You are responsible for your dev board. Uh, so you make sure that Whenever a new ASP comes out, uh, it works, it boots, it builds, yep. all of that. Um, and as we go further, we may be able to give or do a dashboard which shows 
uh, how long something has been working well or not. So that's the other major concern that anyone, uh, you know, any such kind of an initiative will have where people may just say, okay, hey, add my board and then vanish. So yeah. that's something that, that we probably as a community together, we need to figure out a mechanism. Gotcha. One thing that comes to mind naturally is that you have like a time mode based uh, setup where you say if for three months, nobody pushes any patches or does any maintenance or the device is broken. Oh, yeah. You just check it out. Yeah. Right. yeah for what it's worth, um, I think these dev boards are absolutely essential for doing any sort of work on on Android. Um, sure. I know a lot of the people I work with, my company works with, are yeah. always asking someone a similar question. So, hey, which board should I use? Yeah. Right. And so this is a recurring question all the time. So having, I think this is a great addition from my perspective, at least. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I'm pretty new to the Android community. Uh, my last position, we were basically working on creating a, a touch screen uh, based on a rock chip processor. And I, I find like many of the boards that we were looking at did not have ideal uh, reference implementations. And so really having that and having that community to help, how how is the best way to port from the dev board to yeah. you know the latest? That is going to be huge because so much of the documentation right now is is very uh, sparse, and unless you're a, a top tier manufacturer of device, it's it's very difficult to get started. So yeah, yeah. So we we can definitely try and keep that all collaborated in one space, and that's that's basically the idea. Yeah, and so one of the things that and, and you know, no fault specifically in anybody Google, but Google's not been very good at actually fostering a community around their sort of open side of things, and I think Lenaro might have. A bit more sort of a community around it to foster that so yeah oh good catch uh, there's a chance we might have risk five based dev boards coming out sometime in the next year any considerations on adding a risk five board to, to aosp or, or this program um, whether they would get into asp i'm not the best person to answer um i think somebody from google may answer that as a community initiative, uh, I think if that is what the community requires and uh, somebody steps up, I think we should be okay to get that added to this particular dev boards, even though Lenaro doesn't or doesn't work on risk five. So one last question I had was any common code utilization ideas people may have where this kind of an initiative should help. So. Right now, we have a couple of things. We do use, uh, we sort of reuse the audio HAL, uh, ALSA HAL from uh, Cuttlefish. We also reuse, uh, there's one more, yeah, the suspend locker service that we need for some CTS running. So it, device shouldn't suspend while CTS uh, tests are going on. Any other thoughts around what can we use commonly? I'll, I'll leave you that, uh, leave you with the food for that. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to, I was just going to comment that uh, getting into Android platform development, something like knowing which of the howls that were from Cuttlefish were Cuttlefish specific or like the audio how that could be reused in a different platform that just supports Alsa. Yeah. Uh, it, it, that was, information like that would be helpful. Sure. Okay. All right, thanks very much.